So now I'm going to start with these needles. So there we have a look at the before. There's the after. Cleaned up, back together, ready for installation like brand new. I believe there's the main jet emulsion tube right here. And here is the after, like brand new. And here we have the jet for that emulsion tube. I believe it says 180. I can't tell, I'll be sure once I clean it. Yep, 180. S, 180S. And there we go, there's the after. This is our final one. Right here, I can't read the number yet. So we'll clean it, we'll take a look. This one is done. Look at that, very nice. It is a 42S, and this one, even though it is finished because of the gauge, it will uh, still get the carb cleaner and see the air compressor. Make sure that the actual, the hole in there is the correct size. And that's it, you can see now it's blown out to the correct gauge. You can actually see the hole through the paper towel in the middle. So this one is done. With this half cleaned for the items that we were able to clean, we are going to start the assembly of the carburetor for things that can now be assembled. The first thing that I'm going to put in is the float and needle, right? So I'm just gonna drop that right back in here like that. Very carefully put the float in and don't bend that tang because you will have to go through an entire process to set the float height if you do. This should all be done with extreme care. When the cover is on, it holds this pin in position, right? And that's what locks it into place. And that's it, just like that. Absolutely fine. You can see how the uh, that sort of uh, connector wraps around there and holds it in place. Next, I'm going to install this back into the unit. I'm going to place that right there first. Using a fitted screwdriver. This should go in really easy. Uh, there should be zero, zero resistance. Like I'm just using like two fingers to turn this thing. If there's any resistance, you should not be doing this because you don't want to cross thread it. When you get to the end, right, you feel the resistance, you just give a little. Right there is the dead stop. And just a little nudge. And that's all there is to it, right? It's brass, you should not be putting any great amount of force on it. You get to the end, a little nudge, and that's it, right? So that one's done. Next, we're going to drop this one on. Place it right in this hole, just the same way. Turn this right in by hand, all the way to the end to a dead stop. I usually use something fitted, but I don't have one. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to tighten this down so I don't mar anything. I'll give it a little twist and that's it. It's in. It's done. Next is that jet for this. Put it right on top. I'm going to hand turn that in. And give it a little twist. And that's it. It's in. Next, we have this needle for idle, and it goes in here. Generally a good idea to put it in like this, so nothing falls out. Push it up into position, and what we're going for is soft seat. Remember, it's very easy to break those needles. And there is a spring in there, so it does make it difficult to, to tell. You can see in there, there we go, there's dead stop right there. This one does have a nice dead stop to it right so leave it the dead stop and i believe i can still see the scratch i made right this one i believe was three turns right so i'm gonna go i'm just gonna remake that scratch that i made earlier one two Three. So that 
That's not to say that that's correct, but that's how I found it. Need to go back in because there is no, no seals we're waiting on. But since this cover is open, have to be careful, right? This will go in a certain way. We can see that there is a, a notch on here, right? a little, little hole with a tab, and that corresponds to a hole with a tab up here on the carburetor itself. We have to guide the needle in from the bottom. We'll take a look here. Uh, sometimes it falls in. You can see it fell in just like that, but sometimes you have to manually guide it with your hand to get that needle uh, through the, uh, uh, the jet right there. We can see it fell in, but we still have to rotate. When you install these on the, on the Honda, on these carbs, I find it easier to actually not have the needle all the way down, but to have it up a bit so you get a little more slack. This will actually seat, although it's hard to do. You can see now I've got it, right? So you can see it's got that fold. So it's actually got a, a, a ring coming around like that. So, so the end piece that's a little thicker that sits down there get, that gets caught by the cover is now in position. This is, this is a lot easier. My finger is down under here. You can see holding this up, right? If you have it all the way seated at the bottom, it kind of pulls down a little bit and makes it as if it's just too small. Maybe this doesn't affect brand new ones, but if the rubber is just a little bit shrunken, right? As is the case on this one, it does present an issue. Once you've got it set up, however, be sure to add the spring before you close the cover. You're still gonna need your finger under there to support it. I ended up using a, a piece of paper towel to hold it in the exact position that I needed it. And when I got the cover on, I would just open up a little section at a time, make sure it was seated, close it, open, close, open, close. When everything was seated, I paid close attention to this portion here, made sure that was good, everything was perfectly seated. I held it down and I, I put the screws in and now I will give them a, a, a gentle tightening. The exact same cleaning procedure will now be done to the other side of all of the parts on the other carburetor. Of course, for the record on this side, the smaller jet is a 42S. And the larger one, the main jet, is a 175S. Met with Jason yesterday and got the carb rebuild kit. And uh, based on the contents, I'm just going to uh, dial it back a little bit. couple of changes, nothing terrible, right? Uh, notably is that we are going to be reusing these uh, diaphragms right here. And they are in good condition. I figured there was a good chance that was going to happen. So it's not an issue. The only thing is now is uh, I'm going to actually have to clean them, right? Stands to reason. So I'm going to do that now. And since these are made of uh, rubber, I, I used hot uh, uh, soapy water to clean them. And then I get all the, the residual grime out with a, a Q-tip. Make sure they're clean and I hit it one more time with, with soapy water. I don't want to use a carb cleaner. And there we go. Those will be just as good as new now. What I'm going to do is just let them sit up for a minute. Make sure all the uh, moisture uh, dries out from any areas under here or under the metal. Right? Just a few minutes. And that's fine. Those are ready for installation. For this purpose, we have within each bag a new gasket or a new rubber o-ring that looks like this, this oval shape. Put a, I put just a little bit of rem oil on my hands. I don't want any excessive oil on here, but I just, I don't want it to deform when I push it on. So just, just a trace amount I put on. And I'll wipe the rest away so it seats nicely inside here. You can see it drops right in very nicely when I do that. And then I'll, I'll dab it off. There we go. It's not, it's not supposed to be heavily oiled or anything. It's just, I don't want it to crunch or bend. There we go, so that one's in. It's important to note that this gasket is uh, rounded on one side and flat on the other. The rounded side should be uh, facing outward. The flat side is pushed inward. We'll then take the diaphragm and place it on there now. I have my spring ready. The spring will, will seat here in the center. Having everything just like that, the spring, the diaphragm, everything centered, I hold my finger onto it and I'm able to rotate this back and forth so that I could find the, the correct placement. There is a that uh, tube that was cleaned earlier, I'll show on this one just so we can see. 
that tube that was cleaned earlier is supposed to go in that gasketed area. You see a silhouette of that gasket. Turn the carb around so we can look. And as we push down, we want to make it so it lines up with all the screw holes. Everything will seat nicely, just like that. I could hold it down into position and I could drop a screw in. Preferably dropping a screw in on the side that is not going to use the bracket, which we'll be installing shortly. Then we could take our small bracket. There's a notch, we place it back over, holding it steady. All this, all this should hand tighten real nicely, right? And we run it right back up in the notch, right? I've hand tightened everything. You haven't even seen me use a screwdriver. At this point already, once the screws are all the way in, uh, having not cross-threaded anything, we can revert back to a screwdriver to finish this task. First, I'm just seating it. Right? And I can let go. Just a light snug. And that's completed. I did the other side in the exact same manner. I'm gonna revisit this portion and go back and replace these because they are provided in the kit. I see no reason not to as the primary reason and also because there's a filter in here and we were dealing with fuel corruption. We also get a, a nice new needle, so why not? I'm gonna have to take out this float again. It only takes but a minute, so no big deal. And this will be a 10 millimeter socket. Again, it wasn't uh, dirty or terrible or anything like that, but I did have the replacement. I saw no reason not to do that, right? And this had been cleaned out. A quick look in here shows that, you know, the cleaning was just fine. If it wasn't in the kit, I surely would have left it. Make sure it's fully seated before I get my ratchet on there. I don't want to cross the right again, but it is fully seated now. I'll give it just a little nudge. And we're done. I'll put the new needle on. I like to flip those around like that. We can put the float back in. That's it. I'll do the other side now. Having finished my work in the bowls, the next order of business will be to remove this old gasket, which is which is petrified in here. And you want to remove the gasket. You don't want to destroy the surface. So you just want to find a, a starting point to separate this and then peel the rest of it out. There you go. This one's really bad. Really bad. So I'm gonna have to clean this up. I'll put a little rem oil on this gasket right here and place it in the newly cleaned bowl cover, just like that. There we go. It's a decent fit with our gasket like that. There, there is a key right here and right here. Ensure that they um, guide it correctly into position. Once it's in position, hold it very tight so it doesn't damage the gasket or rotate. At that point, we could hand turn a couple of screws back in to hold this into position. One over here, and one over here. That should be enough to get us going. There we go. Cool. Then tighten this down in a in a star configuration. This is just a preliminary first. Come back around again. And then finally, it's mild pressure. There you go. Nothing crazy. That's it, it's done. I'll do the same thing now to the other side. I have an O-ring that's on here. These are dried and cracked and nasty. I'm just gonna be taking this O-ring off, replacing it, and then putting this piece back onto the carburetor. Here we have the old and new sizing up the replacement.
I'm gonna pop out the screw for the bowl drains. There is an O-ring in here that we're going to replace. This is really easy, this one. So that comes out like that. And we can see the O-ring is right here. Size up really quickly, old versus new. Now I'll do the same thing to the other side. This actually proved to be a little crusty, a, a slight oversight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean this up here so there are no leaks. I have one last item for redress to bring this project to completion, and that is to pull these out. And Yamaha, we call this what, the PMS screw. I, I don't know what terminology they use on Honda. Anyway, we're gonna pull this out. This one is three turns, and the reason why I'm pulling this out is we do have brand new O-rings for this. I'm going to size up old versus new. Nice fit. I'm preload it onto the top of the needle. And we're just going to put it right back in. Right back out the original three turns. I'm going to do the same procedure on this side now. And with that, everything is done with regard to the cleaning of all of the components on this carburetor here. And I say here because the way that this is designed, um, the last piece of the carburetor cleaning is the uh, components of the enrichner valves, and they are permanently affixed to the motorcycle. So I'm actually going to be cleaning those parts on the bike itself, right, as it's going to be reinstalled. For the purpose of the actual carburetor itself, this concludes the disassembly, the cleaning, the rebuild and reassembly of these carburetors for the Honda, these Kian carburetors. So I hope you found this video helpful, enjoyable, and informative. Thanks for watching. I'm done. You're on.